To help us out with a quick analysis on the cement piece of news, we have Rajesh Ravi, the Institutional Research Analyst, Cement at HDFC Securities, who joins in. Uh, hi, Rajesh. Uh, good morning, and thanks so much for joining in. Well, have you heard anything with regard to a price increase so far? You know, and how much of it do you accept, expect it to be accepted? You know, the problem is that the price increase could be pushed through. The acceptance could be far lower, as we have seen in the past. Hi, good morning, Nigel. Uh, as far as the price increases, this is an usual phenomenon. Uh, the industry has passed by through a stormy quarter, Q4. Uh, you know, at the start of the Q4, I'll just give a context. The start of Q4, the general expectations were that the industry realizations could improve a bit. As against that, we are, uh, you know, Q4, we are staring close to 5% price decline quarter on quarter, which is quite sharp, given this was the peak quarter. And obviously, at the end of uh, Q4, uh, the industry will look forward to take price hikes, and hence these announcements will keep on happening. Uh, you know, as you rightly said, uh, Q4, uh, March end was also the year end, and hence there's a lot of inventory push, which, will, which has already happened in the channel. And in any month, uh, quarter end, there is already a good amount of inventory with the dealers. So any price hike announcement, they are more, uh, you know, just on papers rather than getting absorbed. And any absorption, if at all, will only be effective from after, say, end of first week or 10th of the month. So we'd have to wait and watch. So South and East market have seen significant erosion in realizations sequentially. And hence, the effort will always be there in these market to make, uh, you know, make meant for better, uh, through better price hikes. So these price hikes, in my sense, whatever announcements of the industry will need price hikes for sure, but the effectiveness of the current price hike will depend on how demand shapes up post 10th of April. Absolutely, a very, very good point. You know, Rajesh, we made this point even on closing bell yesterday, that there could be an attempt to push through the price increase, <clears throat> but a better trend will only emerge after the 10th of the month because that's when you get a sense of demand as well as inventories. Yes. But you'll be factoring in some price increases, right? So for quarter one, Correct. what kind of a price increase would you be satisfied with? And given that it's an election year, maybe you want to give us for the year, what kind of a price increase are you factoring in for the industry? Right. So see, uh, FY24, uh, we were earlier expecting that the realization would be higher by 1% as against that, given that the Q4... Uh, you know, dent which has happened, full year realizations are down maybe around 1%. Now, as against that, when we look into FY25, the first half for sure, everyone is cautious, non trade demand will be low, and hence uh, the volume, whatever sales and pricing, they need to focus on the trade segment. And in trade, price absorption is relatively better. So in FY25, while volume growth will suffer, as against, uh, you know, 7 to 8 to 9 percent, which we, uh, which is a growth number for FY24. FY25 numbers, uh, demand numbers could be uh, slightly slower. And in this context, my view is that uh, the industry will see a better pricing, uh, you know, close to 1 to 2 percent. And that is because of the trade channel, you know, higher sales in the trade channel where price management is relatively better. You have a brand distribution and the premiumizations which help you non-trade, it's quite difficult to take a price hike. So in FY25, you know, be it April or uh, April industry will try to take some price hike and we'll also try to not let the prices drift lower if on the worst case during the monsoon quarter. So that will keep the, uh, you know, and later on take further price hikes. So uh, we are expecting that in uh, April there could be 2 to 3% price hike uh, which could get affected. But it is also to be supported with on the trade side, you know, demand on the trade segment. Uh, sure. I wanted to understand a little more about demand trends itself. What are you seeing since we're heading into election season two? Uh, where are you seeing maximum amount of demand? Is it in infrastructure, in real estate, from the government's end, from the private side, uh, geographically as well? If you can just give us some trends. So, uh, you know, if I look at uh, the Q4 trend, uh, what we are understanding, there has been good uh, sales in the non-trade segment. And that is why the focus on prices have been low and oh, prices have taken a dip. And as I said, key, uh, starting Q1 and Q2, being elections quarter and government formation and all, demand from the infrastructure segment should be uh, relatively muted. And the industry will focus on the trade segment and in my understanding, uh, the trade segment is doing uh, relatively decent. There's not much of a uh, you know, negative news flows 
on the demand in the trade segment. So individual housing and real estate segment continues to do good. So overall demand should be driven from the uh, non-infra segments. Okay, demand from the non-infra segments. Uh, coming to individual stocks then, I mean everyone of course is talking about the expansion that Ultratech Cement is doing. So wanted your thoughts on foreign investor, retail investor. Is there a lot more potential here and what are the top picks in this segment now? So in terms of stocks, uh, we are suggesting among the bigger names, uh, we are positive on Ultratech and we believe their CapEx program is going as per plans. Uh, uh, you know, the stock even at current valuations, while near term the sector could see a consolidation because of the you know uncertainties on demand and uh, price volatility. However, uh, we still believe Ultratech is a good story uh, from, uh, you know, steady good story. Below that, we believe uh, Dalmia offers good returns uh, even at current level. Uh, the company has near term triggers in terms of uh, the volume growth which was poor uh, related to the markets in the first nine months for that to pick up in Q4. And also the first phase of JPA uh, assets acquisition, which seems likely may, may be going, for, uh, going through in this quarter. If that happens, that could, uh, you know, uh, pep up the valuations for uh, Dalmia Bharat. And among the mid-cap names, we are positive on JK Lakshmi, uh, where we believe the volume growth visibility has improved with the commissioning of the Udaipur capacities and uh, even Birla Corp has good volume growth visibility in near term. Uh, so these are the stocks that we are looking at as good opportunities. All right, uh, <clears throat> Rajesh, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure having you with us here on CNBC TV 18.